Luxembourg, and they're going to fundamentally change the TV landscape. And the uh, key, the really, I mean, the really crucial factor is their way of personalization. They know everything about you. First, you are very willingly, you share your age, your sex, what kind of programs you prefer, and very soon, Netflix knows much more. They knows you were perhaps telling them that you like documentaries, which sounds like a good and nice thing, doesn't it? Uh, Netflix sees that, okay, you might like documentaries, but what you actually do is that you watch police dramas or um, romantic comedies or whatever, uh, and they start to provide you with suggestions. If you like this programs, you will probably like this as well. Very soon they understand if you'd switch partner, you might have a new girlfriend, a new boyfriend, and that new girlfriend or boyfriend wants another program than the old one wanted. So you have a new habit of watching. You have a new way of selecting programs. Netflix understands. It takes them two days with their fantastic big data to understand, to understand exactly that you have changed your, your, your taste or your way of, of, of choosing. So the key thing here might be or is just the new black or the fantastic TV series that they can offer, but the key thing is actually personalization. And apart from personalization, in order to not be devoured, you need to think as no traditional media person like me on some more, more some two more, three more things. And one is searchability. This is vital. To be able to find the program you look for, even if you only know the name of one actor or one year. To be able to find the program that your friend was talking about, to be able to find the program that was, that was broadcast 10 years ago. I mean, with Google and the search machine there, it's hard to beat. But searchability within your field of rights is absolutely vital. And this is hard because you have to go back in your archive for so many years and you have to find a system and you have to put so much money into it. And I can just tell you sincerely that at Swedish television we have a long way to go before we can even, you know, we have reached an acceptable le uh, level of, of searchability. Open internet is another condition. Uh, what is happening right now, and it's quite worrying, is that um, the big telecoms are considering to uh, prioritize their customers. Uh, if you look at the concert here in 2005, and you look at the concert 2013, everybody here is their own producer, their own distributor, their own artist. If a lot of broadband, doesn't it? This is expensive. But who is to choose whether they have free access to internet or not? What is happening right now is that the big telecoms companies are, are actually considering to guarantee the fast truck. For example, for Netflix. Who is able to pay for it? While other contributors of content who is not able or even can have the money to pay for it, will get a slower track or even get blocked from internet. So please, when you work as free journalist, look uh, into this, this story because free internet is something that has been so fruitful for the society, for democracy, and it is actually threatened right now. A common public space, I will end up here because uh, I've been talking about consumer habits and devices, I've been talking about new platforms and the explosion of content open to all via, for example, YouTube. But I'm not talking about the most important. Media provides a common space. Perhaps the only one that provides a common space. And I strongly believe that some may be a public broadcaster or somebody else has to take on a responsibility that goes, goes beyond financial results, goes beyond market shares, 
goes beyond coverage because, and I read loud to you, in a connected but fragmented society, the public space where you get informed and entertained, where you share views and opinion, where you face moments of joy and sadness, remains essential. It is because of this public space where you establish a sense of belonging to the community. And this sense of belonging is essential for democracies to work. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joe. Um, we will be asking you to join us in a few minutes again for, um, 